In this tutorial, we're going to show you the process of importing an image into the software and then how we can use the trace bitmap tool to fit vectors around areas of an image. It's worth noting that the quality of vectors produced does depend on the quality of the image. And in this example, we have purposely chosen an image with poor quality to show you what you may expect and what you can do to improve the vectors afterwards. So let's start by opening a new copy of the software and we're going to create a new file and we're going to have a single solid job and it's going to have a width of 12 inches and we're going to have a width and a height sorry of 4 inches and the thickness is going to be 3 quarters of an inch we're going to be using the Z0 on the material surface and the XY datum position is going to be in the center once we have all these options just press OK to accept those now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the image into the job. So for that we just use this option here to import bitmap. Simply select it and then navigate your way to the tutorials folder and find the image to vector logo files folder. Within that we should find the liberator poster.jpg and simply select that and then click open. The software will automatically place the image in the direct center of our working area. And just like any other object within the software we can manipulate it. So if I click it again, as it's already selected, I can put it into transform mode. And that will enable me to maneuver the image around the working area. We can also resize it using any of the drag handles. So if I drag this corner, you'll see that it resizes and scales both height and width, and it will anchor it at the opposite corner. So it'd be the lower left if I'm using the top right anchor point here, like so. We can also resize this and scale it from the center. So all we have to do then is simply hold the shift key down on the keyboard and then drag on any of the corner nodes. So if I hold shift you'll see that we can resize that like so. And we can also use any of the transform shortcuts that uh, will manipulate the size and scale for that as well and we can also move it as well using the transform shortcuts. The one thing that we can't do to an image like we can other objects in the software is we can't rotate uh, an image that's been imported into the software. Now the reason for that is because as it's an image it's built out of many pixels and if we try to rotate that that would disrupt the grid that all the pixels sit on. So for that reason we're not able to rotate uh, an image within the software. So the first thing I'm going to do with this image is resize it so in scale so to keep the height and width the same in ratio. So I'm just actually just going to show you that I can still use the transform shortcut. So once I've dragged hold of any of the corners, I can simply hold the left mouse button down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to have a width of 11 inches and then it's going to scale the height automatically for me. So to do that I'm simply just going to type in 11 and you'll see that down the bottom right hand side it's got a value of 11. That is our width, we always put the width first. So again as mine's now disappeared you only get 5 seconds for to enter another uh, value for the height if you wish. So I'm going to type in 11 for the width, then I'm going to hit comma to accept that as my width, then I'm going to enter 0 and that will then automatically scale it if I type in the letter 0 for the height and then press enter and that will automatically scale that for me like so. Now the only thing left for me to do is put this directly back in the center of our work area again. So I can do this two ways, I can press F9 on the keyboard or I can come to the alignment tools and align to the material, like so. So I'm just going to close that. And you can see, as I mentioned earlier, that this image is quite low resolution. And we've done that on purpose, so you can see, and it will highlight also the problems that we, we might come across while trying to use the trace bitmap tool due to all the noise that might be around the colours that we actually want to trace around. So, with the image selected, I'm going to go ahead and select the trace bitmap tool, like so. And this is the form that we're going to be using. Now we're given two options initially, that's to choose whether we want to trace around colour or black and white. Now what that will do is we select black and white, it will transform the image into black and white colours. And this will obviously work better with monochrome or black and white colour images. But it can also work well with the type of image that we're working with now where it's basically two types of colours in the image itself. And within the black and white option, rather than selecting different types of or shades of colour like you would do in the colour option, we simply have a slider like so. And what this will do, this will go from white all the way to black. Now, 
the further up the scale that we go towards 100% it will pick up more of the darker colors like so and if we want to just go down and towards the minimum end of the scale what it will do is it will remove the different variances in the black color until we get virtually more white than black like so now since we are using a color image choosing the color option may give us more control over the areas that are going to be selected by the tool itself so let's go and select the color option here and you'll see straight away that this time we have a number of colors threshold and the maximum that we can choose of the colors of the image is 16 colors now the our image has been broken down into 13 individual colors and what we can do is we can simply just start checking the different shades of color that we wish to use and you'll notice that straight away that now I selected that second color that we had a massive difference and suddenly a lot of our area of the image turned red now the reason for that is because we have a trace color now that means any color that we match with our checkbox is going to be transformed just so that we can see which colors actually have been selected and what is going to be traced around we have a trace color selection so we can change this to whatever we see fit best like so now the red color itself actually did work quite well with the different colors of the image that we have at the moment so I'm just going to leave that as red and we can simply carry on just selecting these now you might find that we're not seeing much difference when we're selecting these other parts or other shades of color so in that case what we might want to do is just lower the threshold a little bit so we can simply scroll our mouse wheel over the actual uh, slide bar like so and we may want to just go to around about half the number of thresholds so maybe just eight colors and then what we can do is we can just start taking off colors until we see something that represents what we actually want to trace around best now at the moment I feel that our image is quite jagged so I may just want to take off some more colors like so and that's looking good so I'm just going to try one more like so and if I just check that on and off I actually feel like I could benefit having that shade of color actually on because now if I take it off you'll see that I'm starting to lose too much of the uh, shape of each of the letters themselves so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that checked on like so and and this is what I'm actually going to stick with to move on to the other options to fit my vectors. Now the other options that we do have within this form are the corner fitting, the noise filter and bitmap fading. Now the bitmap fading is very simple, just move this slider up and down. It works exactly the same way as the bitmap fading does in the 2D view when we're not inside this tool. But this does override it whilst we're in the trace bitmap tool. This is basically just to help you uh, with the brightness of the image to help us trace the vectors around. Now, obviously if we're using a darker color and the vectors that we're creating are black it will mostly make it harder to see so that's why we might want to make it lighter. So I'm just going to leave mine around there like so. And now we'll discuss the corner fitting. So the corner fitting basically we have two options. We have one all the way down to the left which is loose and then we have all the one all the way to the right which is the tight fitting now the difference between the two are basically how tight the vectors are going to glue to the angles of the uh, surrounding areas that we've chosen to highlight here so with tight we're going to end up with like square jagged type vectors and with the loose we're going to end up with a lot of curves so somewhere in between we'll probably find that sweet spot so if I click all the way to the right so tight and then just preview that down here you'll see exactly what I mean so you'll see that the vectors around the C are very jagged and the in the O and you'll just notice that really these are not the type of vectors that we would like to work with particularly for this since our text is very curved and flowing in an italic manner so I'm just going to hit F on the keyboard just to recenter that and then we also have the really loose settings. So if I just preview that, you'll see that now we've lost all the jagged areas and we've now got a nice smooth curved flow in between all of the vectors around the letters. Now, where this may be a problem is where we have sharp corners. Those now would be most likely replaced with rounded corners. So what we want to do is get like a happy medium. Obviously we have a nice slider so we can preview each stage of the way but I'm going to settle for around about 50% so 
so around here. And then we have the noise filter. Now the noise filter is basically now the noise filter parameter is basically something that we can specify for the software to ignore any selections that we've made within the uh, color selection if they fit within this range of 1 to 10 pixels. Now currently we have our settings set to 2 so you'll see if we just zoom in a little we do have a 2 pixel uh, selection here which has been surrounded by a vector that we've chosen to select. Now we're ignoring the singular pixels. So you can see here we've not got a vector wrapped around that. But if I just move that up one, so now uh, anything with three and above, that will be uh, surrounded by a, a vector. You'll notice if I preview that, those two pixels there no longer have a vector boundary around them. So what we want to do really is just simply keep scrolling up that slider until we find we are losing too many vectors that we actually require. So Basically, I just want to try and get rid of as many of these vectors around here that I don't really need. It just saves me having to delete them afterwards. So if I just carry on, so on 9 pixels now, just getting rid of most of them. So let's try the max, and you'll notice that now I've actually got rid of part of the vectors that I actually require uh, on this O here. So I'm just going to back that off one, like so, and just preview again, and now we have that vector back. So now this is the perfect vectors that I can get from this tool. Now they're not going to be perfect but they're going to be as best as I can actually get them uh, utilizing all the features of this tool. So I'm simply just going to click apply and then close on those vectors like so. Now you'll notice it may be quite hard to see the vectors that we've created at the moment because the image is still in the background. Now we can right click when the actual image is selected and go to object properties and we can again use that uh, bitmap fading like so. So we could just go all the way down to the bottom. So we've still got a resemblance of the image in the background like so. Or we can simply just toggle the visibility of the layer that the bitmap sits on. So if we just go to the layers drop down and we can simply just click on the light bulb icon there and that will simply just toggle the visibility of the bitmap layer. So I'm just going to click in the grey area there just to deselect the drop down for us. And then what I'm going to do is I want to actually remove these extra vectors that have came in from the trace bitmap tool. As I don't actually need those in the logo. So what I'll do is I'm just going to select all the vectors. Now you'll notice that they've come in as a grouped vector. Now you, you'll notice that by the fact that they are highlighted in a solid pink line. If they were dashed that would mean that they're all singular vectors. So basically all we need to do is ungroup them. Now there's two ways to do this. We can simply press the letter U on the keyboard or we can come to this icon here to ungroup the selected objects like so. I'm just going to click in the white space just to deselect those and all I'm going to do then is just select each of the vectors and press the delete key on the keyboard and that will then remove them from our work area. Now if we do accidentally delete one that we don't want to remove like so, I can pr simply just press Control Z or undo and even use one of these undo arrows here underneath the file operations to undo that uh, deletion. Now when you come to do this yourself you may be using a higher resolution image and you may have achieved better vectors than what we have here. Now the vectors that we have got here aren't too bad but there are areas in the vectors that we do have where I think they definitely need a few edits. So if we just took a closer look at the vectors that we've got, you can see that we've got a nice curve here on the L, but then it suddenly goes a bit jagged, and there's no smooth curve to finish off that bottom of the L there. And they got a top of the eye here, which seems to be quite square, but then we have a rounded corner on the top left, so we may want to actually make that sharp. And again here, we've got a nice flowing off the E, and then it suddenly just goes sharp here, what, when we actually might want to have a nice smooth curve all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few things that we can do to simply tweak the vectors that we do have to give them better appearance and overall better quality of finish. So And that's going to be using the node editing tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this vector here and it's all joined and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this tool here to zoom the active view to the selected objects like so, just so we get a closer view when we do change to the node editing mode of all the actual constructs of this vector. 
So to go into node editing mode, we can press N on the keyboard, or we can select this option here to node edit, like so. And you'll see that we've got all these construction points. Now we have nodes, which are denoted by the icon that you can see on the mouse there. And also they are just square blocks, like so, and they do come in different colors. So dark blue means we have a smooth node. Black we just means we have a normal point. And they normally join onto just a straight span as you'll see here if I just zoom in. And that icon on the mouse now with the wiggly line, that basically denotes a span. Now the spans can be straight or curved. And we also then have these control handles. Now these control handles basically determine the curvature of the vector that we are actually creating. Now there's two types of curves that we can create. We can have the smooth points or we can have the Bezier curves or arcs as well. And for each of these different points, we have different options that we can do to edit these. So if I just right click over a smooth point, like so, we can either deselect it from a smooth point just to make it a normal point, or we can delete the point, or we can cut the vector there. So I'm just going to just delete that point there, like so. And then what we can do is we can actually just utilize the control handle from the previous smooth node just to recreate that curve, like so. And just tweak that a little bit. And you'll also see, if we just look around here, you'll see that when I mentioned earlier that we had a nice curve and then we went to jagged straight lines. Now you can see that it is straight lines by the fact that these are black nodes here and they have straight spans in between them. So what we can do is we can simply delete them or delete some of the points and then change some of the points to smooth points. So if I right click this black node here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one. Now you'll see down the right hand side of this context menu that we all have loads of letters. Now what that means is we can simply use those letters as shortcuts as long as we hover the mouse over that particular node. So if I just delete that point like so, and you'll now see that this point here, even though it's a, a node on the end of a straight point, because it joins uh, a curve, you'll see that it now also has its own control arm like so. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's still going to be joining a straight line. So what I may want to do is just simply right click and make that a smooth point, like so. So I can then start editing that curve. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to delete this point here. So I don't even have to use the right click menu. I can simply just press D on the keyboard. But what I'm going to do is this time hover my mouse over this node here and press the S key and what that's going to do is that's just going to change that to a smooth point. So I'm just going to bring out that curve just a little bit like so and I can then just check what that looks like. I just want to move this up a notch and start playing around with the control handles like so. And I could just remove this jagged part of the top of the L there by just hovering my mouse over this node and just pressing the letter D on the keyboard. And if I just click out, you can see that's made that more straight. Now, I'm not actually going to be very specific on each of these. I'm just going to demonstrate the points that we can do to manipulate the vectors really easily. So again, if I wanted to add a sharp top point to make this corner of the eye more square, all I'd need to do is just hover my mouse over the span itself, right click and then insert a point like so. Now it's inserted the point as a smooth point so I'm just going to right click and just remove that and make them more square. I can just pull out until I feel that that's as good as I would like it, like so. So that's fine. Now one thing that we can do and sometimes if we do have really poor vectors that we've created from the trace bitmap tool, we can actually fit curves to these vectors and that will simplify the vectors that we do have. Now how we do that is if we just come back to the normal selection arrow here and we just select all of our vectors that we wish to add curves to, so I'm just going to select like so. And then we just go to this option here which is to fit curves to the selected vectors, like so. Now what you're looking at at the moment is the vectors in their current state. Now they actually look quite good. 
but they can be worse depending on obviously what you've been tracing and obviously had the quality of the image that we had to trace around to start with. So what we can do from here is we can actually change the vectors that you can see and we can change them into either circular arcs, bezier curves or straight lines. Now changing them to bezier curves will make them simpler and obviously the easiest to handle so I'm just going to change that to bezier curves and we can give these a tolerance. Now this, is a, this tolerance is the amount of leeway we actually are allowing to maneuver the vectors from their current position utilizing the new bezier curves that we're going to replace them with. So I'm going to specify a very small tolerance of 0 0.01 and as you can see it's already in that field for us. But if we sp specified a larger tolerance expect the vectors to be slightly different to the ones that we currently have as obviously they got a, a larger tolerance to work with. Now what we're going to do is we are going to choose the options to not keep sharp corners and we're just going to replace the selected vectors. So I'm just going to preview those and you see that's now changed all the node points. So we've changed it and they are now all Bezier curves. Now this does make the editing or node editing a lot easier. And if we're happy with the vectors that we've got we can simply press OK to accept them like so. Now sometimes we may end up with some vectors like the ones that we do have here which don't really resemble much like the text that we might have had in the original image. Now I suspect that the original image had much sharper letters in there than the ones that we've got from the actual trace bitmap tool. Now that's obviously down to the fact that we had a lot of pixelation within the image that we were using. So we may either want to go ahead and manually trace around that bitmap with our own vectors so we could trace around them with the polyline tool and there's a whole other tutorial which you can watch to get to see how we trace around and create manual uh, vectors of tracing an image and that's called the US Buckle tutorial. I will link that in the related videos in the tutorial browser. But in this uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the text with something quite similar just using the standard text tool and obviously it makes that a lot quicker as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to measure the height of one of these letters. So you can see down the bottom right here, you can see that it's roughly just underneath three quarters of an inch tall. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use that information to create our text. So I'm just going to go into the create text tool and I'm just going to type cycles in here, all in uppercase. And from our true type font selection, so these are all the uh, Windows loaded fonts, I'm just going to choose Arial black and you can actually literally just type this in once that drop down is open. So I'm just going to select that like so. And I'm going to give the text a height of three quarters of an inch and I'm simply just going to click apply and that will then place them on the screen for us. So I'm just going to close that form. And they're, they are selected at the moment so I can simply just select again to put them into transform mode and just move them sort of in place where the other text is. So I'm just going to just shrink these a little bit. It's going to shrink to try and match basically the same sort of size that the current vectors are. So something similar to that. Now, now we have that. It may make selecting all the individual previous vectors hard to select. So what we may want to do is just select our text that we've just created as they are all grouped together and right click that and then move that to a new layer. So I'm just going to move that to a new layer called new text and just momentarily it's going to turn off the visibility so I can select the text underneath it easily like so select all that text press delete on the keyboard and then just come to the layers tab and toggle the visibility of that text for us like so and if you wanted to you could actually use this text as a starting ground to further manipulate these vectors to create the ones that match those of the image like so. So if we did zoom in just a little bit on the image you can see that we do have quite a bit of a curve on the E at the bottom there so you may want to just right click convert these to curves so that now these are all individual vectors so that we can then edit these in the same way as we did the liberator text. Now I won't go into too much detail on that here as there is a whole tutorial called the text creation guide and that will give you loads of information about how we can manipulate text in all different varieties of ways and I will also link that in the related video section of the tutorial browser. 
And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.